we're going to start talking about functional groups, which are modifications we can make to hydrocarbons. And our success criteria is being able to name and draw halogenated hydrocarbons. So a halogenated hydrocarbon is a chemical like these chlorofluorocarbons that I have on the side, where you have a hydrocarbon as the base, and then you have replaced some of the hydrogens with halogens. These are among the most common functional groups that we will find in uh, organic chemistry. So the halogens, remember, are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are group 17 on the periodic table. When they ionize, they all have a negative one charge, but they're not going to ionize here. What they're actually going to do is that also means they have a bond capacity of one, just like hydrogen. So you can swap a chlorine or a fluorine for a hydrogen in an organic compound, and structurally at least it remains fairly similar, although it does give it different chemical properties. Just like we have prefixes we use for uh, branches, we also use prefixes for halogenated hydrocarbons. So if there's a fluorine present, we indicate it with fluoro. Chlorine is indicated by chloro, iodine is indicated by iodo, and bromine is indicated by bromo. So on our left-hand side, we have dichlorodifluoroethane, or we have dichlorodifluoromethane. And the reason that it's a methane is it has one carbon, so we're using methane as the base, and then we've switched out the hydrogens for two chlorines, dichloro, and two fluorines, difluoro. We also have a uh, tetrafluoroethane variant. This would be a 1112 tetrafluoroethane. And that's because we've swapped all three of the hydrogens on the first carbon for fluorine, and we've swapped, swapped one of the hydrogens on the second carbon for fluorine as well. Both of these compounds are part of one of the most commonly known groups of halogenated hydrocarbons, and those are the chlorofluorocarbons, or you might be more familiar with it as CFC. So the best known of these is that first chemical we looked at, dichlorodifluoromethane. And the reason that dichlorodifluoromethane is so well known is that this was originally used as a uh, refrigerator coolant because it was easy to compress at room temperature but it also had the advantage of being non-flammable and non-toxic and before we came up with modern refrigerating coolants uh, this was a really big improvement this was the first modern refrigerating coolant and before that people had tried to use alcohol as a coolant but as you can imagine Alcohol is highly flammable, especially when you put it under pressure, so those refrigerators had a tendency to explode, which made not a lot of people want to use them. But the CFCs, at least on uh, the surface of the Earth, seem to be perfectly harmless and entirely safe to use. And in terms of human health and safety, they were. The problem is that these are those chemicals that reacted with the ozone layer up in the stratosphere. And when CFCs get exposed to ionizing radiation, which tends not to make it to the surface of the Earth, it can break off a chlorine-free radical. Now, we haven't talked about chlorine-free radicals a lot. We don't need to really know what they are. But basically what it is, is is a single chlorine atom on its own. And we talk so much about how, well, chlorine and all of the halogens are these diatomic elements. They have to have two atoms together. So you can imagine that a chlorine-free radical is highly unstable. And ozone actually isn't the most stable element either. So that chlorine actually can catalyzes the reaction of ozone turning into oxygen. We couldn't detect that when we first started using CFCs, so when scientists began measuring the concentration of ozone in the atmosphere, they found it was much, much, much lower than they had initially predicted. And 
eventually they realized that the CFCs were the culprit. We do use other halogenated hydrocarbons as well, though. CFCs are pretty much banned uh, through the Montreal Accords across the planet. They're very rarely used, although there are some circumstances where allowances are made, but we try to keep them out of usage as much as possible because they are very, very uh, negative impact on the environment. But we do use uh, halogenated hydrocarbons in other places. Uh, they're commonly used in insecticides. In fact, DDT is the abbreviation for dichloro, so two chlorines, dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroethane, which is basically two uh, benzene rings with chlorines on them stuck onto an ethane group that has three chlorines on them. Another common insecticide is toxaphene, which also contains chlorine. Uh, <clears throat> polychlorinated biphenyl, another benzene-based compound, is used in electrical transformers. Teflon is actually a halogenated hydrocarbon as well. It's polytetrafluoroethylene. We'll talk about polymers later on, so you'll understand what that poly means, but Basically, what this does is that those fluorine carbon bonds are really, really, really good at not reacting. So anything that you want to make non-stick for cooking typically has some sort of flor fluorinated hydrocarbon in it. Um, and dioxine and furan are both products of uh, byproducts of chlorine bleaching and other industrial processes. So we do see these halogenated hydrocarbons still all over the place. It's just the CFCs that we really, really have to control because of their negative impact.